Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at October Anna and the Underground number one of two from Dead Good Comics. Check out this dope AF cover by my buddy Yannick Paquette. I love it. It looks beautiful. You did an amazing job. The cover is worth the comic book alone and that's probably for the best. Anyway, is it good? Does it live up to the hype? I was so excited for it. It's, mm, we'll see. Let's get into it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's do it. Okay, so I became familiar with Octobriana, I think, because of Jim Rugg's mention of it. Um, he did, like, uh, I think it was a Kickstarter and it was, like, the first, like, uh, all, um, what do you call it? Uh, day glow, you know, neon poster light comic book. And, um, uh, very cool concept, right? He wanted a cool, like, story to justify the wacky, wonky sort of avant-garde format and uh, decided to use Octobriana, the um, public domain character that was created in this, like, a crazy background. But anyway, so uh, he did his thing, and I think there was another series before this from these guys, possibly, but, you know, public domain, so anyone can use her, so why not? And if you're going to do it, get Yannick Paquette to draw the cover because that is gorgeous. Love it. Colors by Nathan Fairburn, I'm guessing. Full Tilt Boogie, part one of two. Love the name. Um, I think I saw the ad for this a couple weeks ago looking through the uh, new comics this week, you know, trying to plan my shopping. And I was very excited based... I still have yet to get the Octobriana, um, you know, Jim Rugg book because... Um, I, like, I either can't find it or too expensive on eBay or something, but I'm definitely going to get that for sure. And so, but I love the concept. I love the way the character looks and um, this cover. I thought, I don't know, the inside looks to me, we'll get into it, but okay, so uh, previously, Stu Taylor, writer, Simon Fraser, artist, Josh Reed, letterer, Doxing Match, Lucy James, writer, Simone Ragazzani, artist, and Ellie Wright, colorist, Hassan Atzmain El Hadou, letterer, and Red Girl Summer. Red Girl Summer, that is so weird. Like, what is, like, why does that sound familiar in some way? Part one, God Hates a Coward. Stu Taylor, writer, and Stephen Harris, artist, Sophie Dodgson, colorist, Josh Reed, letterer. So, um, this is basically like Octobriana. She's uh, she's uh, sort of this uh, anti-Soviet sort of like I don't know warrior kind of lady that was created by this underground of cartoonists. But I don't know. It's just so weird. The background is just so weird. But anyway, she was created as public domain, sort of to be used by you know cartoonists to sort of revolt and tell their story or whatever. So, you know, I have to believe, you know, she probably came back into the zeitgeist because of Jim Rugg and his comic book. But I don't know. She's just a cool character. Like, there was a magazine or something about her that I have yet to get. Like, I I almost feel like I'm too early on this. Like, I wish I would have done the other stuff first. But this feels a little bit like if Boom Studios would have got, like, the license for Octobriana and are just sort of, like, moving forward with her storytelling. It's very, like, you know, um, the art looks very much like what you might see from, like, uh, Marvel or DC being published right now. Very, you know, on trend, on point, sort of, like, with the color palette and just the style and, um, you know, the use of, I don't know, the sort of use of virtual reality and stuff. I don't know. It's not my favorite way of telling a story, but uh, here it is. I don't know. You know, this is kind of like reminding me of what you might see in like Harley Quinn or something. And that's not a slam per se, but I don't know. It's just sort of, in a way, just sort of like mainstreaming something that seems so underground to me. Yes, that's, I think I'm hitting the nail on the head. Like this looks very much like what a modern take on her would be through almost a corporate lens, I hate to say, but um, I'm just a punk rocker at heart, and I just feel like the sort of, like, uh, the backstory of Octobriana doesn't 
fit well with this sort of polished, like, ha-ha, sort of, like, Hollywood taken away. Like, I don't know, like, does that make sense to anybody? But, but that said, it is not unenjoyable. The art is very nice. It is very pretty. It, you know, clearly a lot of love went into this. A lot of effort went into this. Um, I'm just not crazy about the take, is what I think. But, see, this is, I, I feel like I th see this in my head for some reason. Like, maybe from, this is sort of from the magazine or something. And I think we might get to that. But, um, but then again, you know, I'm sort of getting into it more as the story progresses. Like, we have these... And this is where I needed to pick up the first story first because we have actually her arch nemesis is Baba, Baba Vega, Baba Venga, like the the prophet witch, which is kind of fun in a lot of ways because, um, I guess that would be a public domain character too, right? Um, Baba Yaga, sorry, forgive me, but if you know Baba Yaga, like, she's like Nostradamus, but, um, you know, a woman, there you go, and a witch. Uh, so, yeah, like, oh, so, I don't know, I just thought, like, it was kind of funny and, like, cliche shticky in a way, like, they're gonna go on this mis mission in the second part, and the whole pretense is, like, can they get through it without... Uh, Octobriana killing somebody and she's like I'll do my best they deserve it anyway so I don't know oh and this is, like was pretty creepy and disturbing but see like this bright pink and stuff I feel like this is what we're seeing all over the X-Men and like um, I just uh, I'm not crazy about it in the X-Men and so I'm not super crazy about it here but but that said, I think that's just my taste level as far as modern comics goes. Because, you know, I must sound like a dick, like, because it, it looks pretty. It does look pretty. It's very well drawn. There is definite talent going on here. And damn it, I'm definitely going to pick up the second issue to see what the heck happens. And possibly the first series. I mean, if nothing else for the Yannick Paquette cover, right? See, that's where it pays to have, like, a good cover, especially on an iconic character, like... I pretty much bought it, like, no, like, with mixed expectations, knowing that it would have been at least worth it, because it's freaking cool, and plus, Yannick drew the cover, so. So it's a fun book, nonetheless, but, yeah, that's the image I'm, like, loving, and I, like, totally live for, and, um, it just looks so, like, cool, and in your face, and, like, pop art to me, and that's fun, too. Anyway, the next cover from issue two by Yannick Paquette looks so good. It's so funny looking at this. It makes me wonder, like, did you ever draw Danger Girl, Yannick? You had to have. You must have. And if you didn't, you should, right? Anyway, so definitely worth the four bucks for the, uh, for the Yannick Paquette cover. For sure. Rated M for Mature. Anyway... It's a valiant effort, it is. Um, I don't know if it's worthy of the character or not. I hate to say that, but I think it's an enjoyable read. It's definitely beautiful art, and um, you should pick it up. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit, my, hit that like button, and I'll bring you more later.